Hey, how's it going everybody? It's your favorite cow. And today, I'm going to be showing you an interview I had with Serena Hernandez. She's a classically trained opera vocalist and studio musician. In last week's video, I show you how I made a beat using a vocal sample Serena sent me. If you haven't checked that out yet, please, please do so. It should be coming up right now. Okay, without any further ado, let's get into the interview. Here's a quick bit of trivia about you. You actually sang on J. Cole's Crooked Smile, I believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly didn't know who he was. I didn't follow that kind of music. <laughs> and everybody took pictures with him. And I'm just like, who is this man? I don't know who he is. <laughs> but then I found his music and I really liked it. Can you talk about the, how you got that gig? Like, like, who did you get in connection with? Yeah. It was through my co-director, director from choir when I was in high school. Oh, wow. So this was a gig in high school? Uh, probably when I was leaving high school. So probably like 17, 18. Like, how was Jay Cole then? Like, super chill. Like, I really didn't know who he was because he was so chill. He didn't act like he was famous. Also, I think it was more of a fact that we're on his album. We're not trying to jump on top of him because he's famous. We're literally doing him a solid because we're like co-creating his music. So I think that's why he was even more open to us, but he was, he was a sweetheart. Like he ate pizza with us, he was great. That's, yeah, that's dope. Like he, his brand is kind of him being like just a regular schmegler guy that you wouldn't necessarily think that he has as much money and fame as he actually does. <laughs> Which played more into the fact why I didn't understand who he was. <laughs> All right, so my next question is, do you believe in the concept of a good voice as a singer? Yeah, I do. But I feel like people that do not have a good voice when they're born with it have the capability of exceeding talent with hard work. Regardless if I have a good voice or not, if somebody wants to sing and they're, they put their hard work into it and they, put, they work their ass off, then who, who is to tell them that they can't make it, you know? Do you think it possibly like downplays the work of what vocalists do? Yeah, for sure. Like I've definitely felt that a lot of people have this, or I don't know if it's a stigma or a stereotype that singers don't work hard because it's not an instrument or it's an internal instrument. Therefore, it's not as hard as a instrument that you have to pick up. Working with an internal instrument is extremely difficult because you cannot see it and it goes off a of sensation. So because it goes off sensation, it's extremely hard to understand and develop it. What, what do you say sensation? What, what do you mean by sensation? Our body is literally our instrument. So because of that, our entire body has to be physically relaxed in order for our, our instrument to resonate. We have to be very um, in tuned with our body. So we're just like, oh, I feel tension in my shoulders. Not a lot, but I felt it. Oh, I felt tension in my tongue. My soft palate isn't raised. All these things can interfere with resonance. As a, as a classical singer, I'm pretty sure it's as a pop singer as well, but I'm speaking from a very classical viewpoint. If your body is not relaxed, if you're not aware of your body, you do not resonate. You mentioned the classical world. From what I can tell, you are a woman. I hope so. You gotta, you gotta figure that out. <laughs> I can't, I can't answer that for you. It's an internal struggle, okay? <laughs> it's, it's an internal instrument. <laughs> All right. So, what would you say are the uh, some of the advantages and disadvantages of being a female in the classical world? Competition is brutal. Is that a disadvantage or an advantage? Disadvantage. Being a female soprano in the classical realm is incredibly difficult. There's millions of us. The thing that brings you out is your niche, obviously. If you're just a singer that has a nice voice, but you have no niche, you, it's going to be extremely difficult for you to get roles. Would you say there's any advantages? Physically, the music I like to sing is higher. So for me personally, the advantage is that I can sing those pieces. I can express myself through the rep that I actually like. So just saying that pessimistically, everything sucks, that's not true. But if you do not stand out, 
it's true. That kind of gets me to my to my next question. Would you say it's easier for a female vocalist in the mainstream realm as a session musician? Hell yeah. Opposed to the classical realm? Hell yeah. Classical realms are, if it's more than one person, it's mainly um, choir. But in the mainstream realm, as a female, I definitely think if you have the chops and you know people, but to know people, you got to work your ass off. I don't like when people say, oh, I'll just know people and then get the gig. No, you have to work your ass off on top of knowing people because just because you know people doesn't mean you're going to get in. But definitely, like, in the mainstream realm, I feel like it's a little more easier. But what would you say is the, the collaboration process different? How, like, how are they different from the classical realm and the mainstream realm? Depending on the studio session, it can be extremely collaborative. Or it can be, I'm never meeting this guy in my life. He told me to sing this. In the classical realm, it's extremely more collaborative. Um, because I'm a singer, I can sing with a violin, a viola, a cello. It's always a, what can I give to my pianist and what could he give to me to make this show phenomenal or make this performance different from the others? I think it just depends on, and I'm talking about both realms, what the composer wants. In, in that sense, it depends on the producer or the composer in the mainstream realm where whether or not they just want to treat the recording of the session musicians as is instead of like changing and developing it. There are obviously exceptions to the rules where they're just like, <clears throat> do you guys feel like this is good enough? What would you guys change? But again, you're, you're paying for workers. You don't really get to do that a lot. Yeah. All right. Then you've convinced me. Would you say the classical realm is, is as rigid or maybe different levels of rigidness? Definitely different levels um, of rigidness because depending on who you're talking about, talking to in the classical realm, they can be very like, you can't sing it that way. It has to be done this way. When there's hierarchy, there's politics. W would you say there's um, that level of, uh, of politics in the classical realm as well? Definitely. The classical realm is so small like incredibly small. And because the classical realm is so small, there is definitely politics involved. Definitely like competition wise, there's politics. School wise, there are politics. Getting teachers, there's politics. How do you feel about the current state of music education in the States? And what do you think um, can be improved? Opportunities. We're gaining all these different skills, but the only opportunities to sing is through the school and what they are able to physically, financially afford. Within my personal experience at my college, they lacked a lot of real life performance experience. Like, oh, let's go to this place to sing at a cafe. Let's go to, let's go to Carnegie Hall and put on a real live recital, including all of our students, you know? And because of that, a lot of students didn't get recognition or the chance to perform. I mean, at least in my experience, it was a little strange. Like I, I felt like a fish out of water, but it was definitely an experience that I appreciate that I had because I delved into this new world that I didn't necessarily understand and they didn't necessarily understand me, which is an entire topic in itself. Those opportunities were definitely lacking where you guys can exceed post-graduation. I definitely think because of it being a, such a small department, they were capable of creating more performances. Okay, so what do you think about the stereotype? Like musical education, at least on a collegiate level, seems to be a bit out of touch. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I feel like that's been the case since I was in kindergarten, but um, <laughs> <laughs> we won't go there. I think it stems further from the college. I think it's the head ponchos above that are just like, this is how it's supposed to be taught. This is what I want you to do if you want to be seen as a great music department. It stems from fear. Like the fear of the unknown. Because like there was an interesting video and um has been making the rounds, the Adam Neely video. I think like what resonated with me about it was the fact that musical education is a bit racist. The music I would listen to going home was the music I listened to at school. And it just kind of told me Western classical music, that's how it's supposed, that's correct music. Everything else is a lower form yeah. of music. 
And because of that, we're not going to teach it mm-hmm. because it's not supposed to be taught. Being a master's was, is completely different than undergraduate. Like we talk about those things. We address those things. Like even with my ethno class, we were just like, what kind of music do you guys want to talk about? And I'm like, fuck it. Let's talk about Hawaiian chants or let's talk about Neo soul. Let's, let's talk about these things that people don't usually talk about and let's learn about it. And he's like, okay. In undergraduate, they don't touch upon any of that. If anything, they are scared to touch upon it. And, and I think it's scary for people to address it as a race issue. I think whenever anybody drops that word, it's racist. People tend to get very defensive. No. Yeah, like, yeah. no, what? How can it be? How is that possible? Yeah. Because, like, we're just studying white yeah. dudes. That's not to diss their accomplishments because the music is still good. But should it be the end-all, be-all? I don't necessarily think so. On that note, skirt off to Marrier Prospects. It's time for the speed round. Speed round, yay. Number one, Coke or Pepsi? Neither. (laughs) Wrong. It's Fanta Grape. Number two, soccer or football? Soccer. Tell me I'm wrong. I'll fuck you up. Wrong, but still right. The correct answer was football. It's still soccer, but you did not pronounce it correctly. Tea or coffee? Tea. Correct. You're drinking coffee right now. (laughs) You have no proof. She has no proof. Take a lesson with any musician, dead or alive, who would it be? Maria Callas. I don't know who that is, but correct. You should know who that is. You went to school with me. (laughs) Number five. Is Staten Island a borough of NYC? No. That is correct. Number six, are you a texter or a caller? I'm a texter. That is wrong, <laughs> but I do the same. Yeah, so what's the fucking problem? That's right. Go next question. Hey, hey, hey. This is my, this is my show. Number seven. I, I, I listen to you anyways. Number seven. <laughs> favorite key to sing in? Ah, uh, A flat major. I love that key. That is correct. Number eight, snapback hats or fitted hats? Snapbacks. That is correct. Air conditioner or fan? Air conditioner. You fucking hate the planet. That's wrong, but I'm also wrong because I use <laughs> I use the AC way more. <laughs> Last but not least, number 10. What's your favorite farm animal? Farm animal or pig? Why does no one love me? Just to say that you're fine Why does no one love me? You, just... uh, you look weird and you look like you're on cocaine, so. Well, you can't sing. I was told that already. It doesn't hurt my feelings anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you to Serena Hernandez for letting me interview her, for taking time out of um, her day to do this. You have the floor. If you have um, anything you want to say to the public, go ahead. Be nice to everybody. We live in a world that hates everybody right now, so be nicer. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Woohoo!